What's that? What, what kind of decision are you making? Let's say that you're blowing a bucket on the first opening and six inches in. What, what would you want to go through? Well, it, where, where the decision needs to be made is if during the, the final flow period, if, if you quit blowing after 15 minutes, okay, there's no point in leaving that thing shut in for an hour. Okay. You can just shut it in right there and, and leave it shut in for you know three times your flow period, 45 minutes. And you've just saved yourself a bunch of rig time. And whereas, But if it's written in stone that you're going to flow that thing for 60 minutes or for 30 minutes or whatever, you know, it's not going to hurt anything to do it, except so your wallet. So if you're getting a blow, you might as well shut it. No, if you're getting a blow, you want to leave that, you want to leave it blowing for as long as you can on the, on the final. On the initial, if you see a blow, if I saw a blow on the initial, I'd, you know, in a minute, I'd shut it in immediately. Because I don't want that fluid coming out of the reservoir. But on the final, you know, ideally, you'd, you would leave it open until the blow quits. If time, rig time wasn't a worry, if sticking wasn't a worry, if any of that, you'd leave that thing flowing until it quit flowing. Then shut it in and let it build up. That would be your maximum depth of investigation that you could look at. All right, we probably addressed all this. Uh, the final flow period determines how far into the reservoir we're looking. As I said, you know, ideally let it flow until it until you get, don't have any blow. Um, it, it's, from an academic standpoint, all the uh, empirical equations that you use for well testing are actually based on uh, the flow period, but because of the flow dynamics, frictional losses and phase segregation, all the crap that goes on while a well is flowing, you can't really do your analysis on that, so you're actually doing it on the shut-in, which is a much smoother data set. Just take some manipulation of the data. Uh, the final shut-in is the only part that's typically interpreted. Um, three to five times the length of the flow period. There again, longer is better. It makes my job a whole lot easier if it's completely built up by the time uh, the end of the test comes around. If it's too short, uh, there's introduced uncertainty introduced into P I and P star. Um, I think we've probably talked about that. You know, it just the shorter the shut in and the more inflections there are on that derivative curve, the more difficult it is to forecast uh, the pressure out. P star is not P I. I don't know if we want to get too complicated on this, but. Uh, in well testing terminology, P star is the number that's calculated when you do your Horner plots and all these things. And you can think of, most people think that P star and PI, initial reservoir pressure are the same thing. In actuality, P star is the current reservoir pressure after whatever fluid you've produced or taken out. So it's the, you know, the pressure after everything has flowed. Uh, we've talked about this definitely. Horner is invalid most of the time. Okay. Now, let's look at a couple of things here. If, if you're looking at one of my analysis, um, you'll, you'll see this. What this is, is the, I've stripped away all the hydrostatic data from the, from the test so you don't see the going in, coming out and it'll start with uh, you know, a flow period and end with the final shut-in period. We have pressure on the left-hand axis and on the right-hand axis is going to be your uh, flow rate, be it for oil or be it for gas. So here you can see that during this flow period uh, we came in at you know, something under 400 a day, which is there, and it built up. Pressure was dropping, which makes sense. On this flow period, you know, we started out it well cleaned up a little bit and uh, started out at about 500 a day and gradually tapered down. Um, one, as we talked about earlier, if the uh, flow rate is going down, then that typically means the flowing pressure is going up. However, here we see that the flowing pressure is going down and the gas rates are going down. So that to me jumps out at me as a something that needs to be addressed. We'll also look, I'll typically label the last data point here at 1680 PSI here at 1581. So we've got a what 19 PSI pressure drop. Excuse me. 
I mean, 100 psi pressure drop. Um, so we've got a couple of things. We've got 100 psi pressure drop. We've got the gas rate dropping along with the flow rate. So those are things that I I see uh, just just off the raw data. The stair steps on those gas flows. That's just uh, jokes that's that. Yeah. It, no, typically not. What it is is, you know, they give me a, a pressure reading every three or four minutes or something like that, so um, I can only put it in as a stair-step function. Okay, now here we get to the derivative. Uh, and as we discussed earlier, we've got our, our different sections of the derivative. We've got this piece over here that's the wellbore storage piece. We've got our transient portion here. These two don't really tell us much about the reservoir. Now, I've talked to some of you guys about this curve here, these little chicken feet that are stepping down. This is called the PPD curve over here, or primary pressure derivative. And the theory behind this is that each point on the curve needs to be lower than the one that precedes it in order for it to be valid reservoir data. So this curve needs to be constantly going down, and it can change its rate of going down. You know, here it's kind of flattening out from here to here. But even so, each point is less is lower than the one before it. Uh, and so that tells me that all the data included in this test is valid for interpretation. So any inflections I see, I have to account for. So here we see, as we've talked about, radial flow. This well achieved radial flow for a period of time. So. Uh, if you'll think about this as a, as a well bore drilled into a high permeability zone, the fluid is flowing into that well bore equally from all directions. That's what we're seeing here. But eventually, you drain that high permeability portion of the reservoir, and you're looking at some tighter reservoir or a boundary or something out further away. And that causes this upwards inflection in the derivative curve. And in just you know, a quick look at it, we don't know what's causing it. It takes further analysis and modeling to figure out what's causing that. Now if I draw the, uh, I superimpose this radial flow solution on here, it comes up with a permeability of one and a half millidarcies, a skin of three, which is a pretty high skin number. That means that you've sustained some damage during drilling. And that the current pressure would extrapolate to 1589. Now, that number is too low. If I were to take this same curve and slide it up into here, that pressure would number would go higher. But I can't do that because obviously this line is horizontal, whereas the derivative is at an angle. Therefore, it doesn't work. Um, so anytime you see an upwards inflection in the curve, that means that there's been a change in reservoir character. Uh, typically, it's going to be a permeability barrier or a decrease in permeability. Um, we'll, I'm going to beat up Mr. Horner again here. This, if we, if we look at the line that I put through in here, this horizontal line here gets superimposed onto a standard Horner plot over here. And you can see where it goes through and you can see the pressure is actually still building so that if I do a Horner analysis on this, I'm going to come up with a final pressure here, when in reality, it's going to be up here someplace. Just to demonstrate you know, why Horner's not valid. All right. The, uh, when I'm analyzing these things, I have to fit the response of the test into a reservoir model. We've talked about this radial flow, and that's where you've got the fluid flowing into the well bore equally from all directions. Another model is a fracked well, uh, where you have a vertical fracture um, with either infinite or finite con conductivity within the fracture. That means if you can model it either as the fracture is just busted open and it's just going through air, or it's packed with frac sand, which would slow down the flow got a composite model which is two or more concentric zones of changing reservoir permeability and it can be the permeability can either decrease away from the well bore or increase away from the well bore it just depends on what the data shows.